want to welcome everyone to week three of our financial stewardship class. And uh, we believe that the Lord is going to continue blessing us today and next week as also. Uh, last week we talked about uh, debt collection and the debt snowball effect on how it's very ben beneficial to um, illuminating debt. And um, one thing I want to add to it was um, whenever we find ourselves, when we get one debt paid off or we get one milestone conquered, what we need to do is we need to take the money that we was putting on that previous debt. So, for example, say you, you just recently had your car paid off and you was paying $200 a month on that car note, okay? So first thing is we don't want to go back in debt, okay? So that's $200 extra that you should have now. So we need to keep the same mindset as if we still are paying this $200, but we want to take that $200 and apply it to the next debt that's after the smallest one that you just had. So say you had, we gave a list last week of several different debts that you may have and say the next one that you want to pay on is 300. So if you've been paying 300 every month on that debt, now the $200 from the car note that you used to pay on that's now gone, you want to take that $200 and put it with that 300. So how much do we have now? We have $500 and we're going to now start paying that on the next debt. That's how that works. Okay. And so forth. So once you get the next, once you get that $300 debt paid off, and then you, you don't go back into debt again. Okay. We take that 300 and that 200 and we put it on the next debt. Okay. And what that allows for you to do is you're now making more payments and you're putting more money on that debt, causing it to be paid off quicker. Okay. Does that make sense? So that's called the debt snowball effect, which is what we learned last week, which allowed for us to not just pay the minimum payment on, on debt, but allows for us to keep the same mindset because a lot of times we get a debt paid off and what do we go? We go back into debt. We shouldn't go back into debt. We're trying to get out of debt. Okay, so we need to be smart and take that $200 or that $100 or whatever the debt that you, it might just be $25 that the Lord has blessed you to pay off. You want to take that $25 and put it with the next debt that's on your list. Okay. It's very important last week that you go home and make a list of all your debts, including your mortgage if you have one. Every debt that you have, if it's not, if it's something that you're making payments on, it's considered a debt. Okay, and you want to list them from uh, least to greatest, and you start with the smallest one. And we used last week as an example. If anyone remember being like a young kid, you took a snowball and you started with a little bitty ball, and if you rolled it, it gradually got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So we want to do the same thing with our with our debt and paying off our bills, okay? And eventually we will get to a point where we will be debt free, mm -hmm. okay? But the key of staying debt free is not to go back in debt uh, after you get debt paid off, okay? It's so easy to get something paid off and say, oh, well, that's good, not going to buy this. No, we need to take that money because once we get all the debts paid off, now we can we may have been paying a thousand dollars a month on debt. We should now see a thousand dollars savings every month. Okay, and that's very important that we can see where our money's going. And we, so we need to have a financial goal. So one goal that you, I would say to have is after you get your debt paid off, you should start seeing how much money should you be able to save every month. Okay? Every month we should see uh, a goal that we want to hit. And we may miss it some weeks, and uh, we may make it some weeks, but the main thing is we're still saving more than what we was before. We went from nothing to something. I tell people, even if you if you were saving two dollars this year, if you save, if you go next year is three or five dollars, it's still more than what you was doing before. And increase is better than decrease, mm -hmm. always. Okay, and the same thing with your ties. You know, you want to be able to increase in your ties and offerings. You be able to be a blessing. So nowhere do we say we have to stay at the ten percent. If we want to just increase to eleven percent next year, then twelve percent, that's fine too. But we always want to find ourselves increasing. And whenever we increase, it opens up us a room for where we can be blessed even more. Because we get blessed by blessing others. Okay? So you want to be able to open yourself up to where if you want to be able to bless somebody with $20, $25, $30, you can do that. And what does that allow for you? It allows for you to have greater blessings coming towards you because you're able to bless. But if we're always in debt and our money is always being paid out. To, to in debt and on bills and stuff that we don't have control over, then it, where is the room for us to be a blessing to someone else? All we can do is pay the 10% and give a little offering sometimes and never be a blessing to anyone else. So that kind of dries up your blessings. It kind of gives you a, a limitation on how much you're able to be a blessing to someone else if everything you got is already going out on bills. And then, of course, you pay God, you give him his money, and then you, you, you're left with nothing. Where can you be a blessing to someone else?
because we want to be able to be able to lend and not have to borrow. Correct. That's what the Bible says. So now lesson session three, we're going to be talking about ways to save money. And these are going to be ways. And I don't have all 30 of them listed, but if you have time, you can visit dumblittleman.com and find all 30 ways dumblittleman.com you can find all the 30 ways of saving i just kind of put down on paper some that we have time to discuss in this session some things that you may already be doing some things you may never thought of doing and it's ways to save money because actually saving money is actually easy it's actually easy if you just think about it you just have to do what it takes to save money because pennies do add up how many know that pennies add up how many know that quarters nickels and dimes add up dollars add up that's why the government and the world of society is designed to get every little quarter, every little dime, every little dollar. When you go into the grocery store, as soon as you get ready to check out, there's a whole bunch of little items. They're there to get the last little penny, the last little dollars that you have. Gum, oh, it's only a dollar. You done did all your grocery shopping, all your listing. Now here it is, time to check out. Do you think they put those things in the aisle for, for no reason? Those are last minute things to get the last little bit of money out of your pocket, okay? You, you, you come to the cash register, you don't need a candy bar, but you see it's only 69 cents. You know, you need a, they may even be on sale. It say, tell you that it was a dollar and now it's 50 cents. So you think, oh, I'm saving. So you go ahead and give into it. Okay, those things are there to get the last little bit of nickels. You done spent $300 in the grocery store, but that wasn't enough. They want, you know, if they can get another three or four dollars from every person that comes through the line, Sister Murray should know this. If they can get another two or three dollars from everybody that comes through the line, they have about 30 cash registers, six of them open. So you stand in line anyway, you're waiting because you're like, man, so now things around you start looking inventive. They, th they look exciting. Well, you know, I don't need this, but since I'm waiting, I might as well go ahead and get it. The Slim Jims, the jerkies, the little sodas, the little teas, the little cream, sugar, pie, they got all kinds of stuff up there. So if you don't watch it, you don't you don't had your budget. You don't went to the store. We talked about budgeting. You don't went to the store with your list and you got all the things you need. But you may have tacked on five or ten extra dollars just waiting to ring out. Of stuff that wasn't on the list. And if you do that every month and you do that every year, it adds up. But you don't think about it because it's only a little bit. OK, so uh, our first one on page on the bottom of page two uh, is going to be cook at home often if both the husband and wife work and this doesn't it doesn't matter if you are married you may be single but if you can uh husband and wife work this is likely to be very difficult why is that because you guys are both at work when you get home don't no one want to feel like cooking but it says start out with the habit of cooking at home once a week and slowly increase the frequency until you find a balance between saving and not getting stressed out okay so this is kind of like a um it's it's one of those things you just don't do automatically. You want to kind of gradually introduce this into you guys' budget, into your lifestyle, because if you don't, you'll be stressed out. But um, what this is going to encourage you to do is you're going to save money because you're now replacing the time where you may have used to go out to eat or you may have uh, grabbed something. Uh, even if it was on sale, you may have grabbed something just for that day and it lasted for that day. But if you can actually find yourself cooking meals at home, they will be healthier because you put you know what you put into the meals and they're going to be cheaper because a lot of times when you cook at home, you have leftovers so you can eat off of more than once. A lot of times when you go to a restaurant or something, you only have a one time one meal type of deal you know so you're not you're not going to have any leftovers and even if you do it's not going to really be enough where you can feed your whole family or eat again now if you're single you may be able to but still in the long run it's going to cost more money than if you was to prepare your meals at home but i mean go just for a simple fact if you go to a restaurant and get a burger and a fry and a drink you may spend between eight to ten dollars now if you can take that same eight and ten dollars and now that's just if you was a single person, if you're a family of three, you have a husband and you have a wife and you have a daughter, if you're a family of four, and all of you guys get a hamburger and fry and get a drink, you know, then, I mean, do the math. What is eight times four? Okay. And you may want to go to McDonald's. You can probably wing the dollar meal, you know, get the McChicken for a dollar and get the uh, fry for a dollar and maybe get a dollar large drink. So that's still three dollars per person. OK, and if you have a family of three, you can feed your whole family on junk for nine dollars, which is still pretty reasonable. But let's turn around and take that nine to twelve dollars and go to the grocery store. What can we get? Can you get almost a, a whole pack of hamburger? 
I mean, you can get a pound of ground turkey for like two dollars. Okay, so say you got a pound or two pounds of ground turkey. How many meals can you make with the ground turkey? Say you buy a loaf of bread. What do you have? What's that? About a dollar ninety-nine, maybe two dollars. So if you had that, so let's just do the math here. We have a pound of ground turkey for two dollars. We have a loaf of bread for two dollars. How much are we at? We're at four dollars. Okay, and let's say well, we want to put some cheese on there, spice it up. Okay, how much is a slice? Uh, how many you can get like twenty-four or sixteen slices of cheese for maybe a dollar? So we're at like five bucks. Now, if you ground the turkey up, how many meals do you think you can get out of that? Ground turkey, a pound of it. I mean, if you if you do just if you make like juicy burger, sloppy joe, if you want to put it in with some noodles, if you want to put it in, don't get hungry. <laughs> you want to put it in with some chili, chili and beans, you can make some meals out of it. So what I'm just trying to open you guys' minds up to, it's actually cheaper to cook at home, and it's going to be healthier for you than to go out and buy. And what is this going to cause? You're going to have leftovers, so it's not going to be a one-time meal. So if you can eat off of something, uh, it only costs you $9 to make, and say you get two or three meals out of it, family of three, versus eating out three times, spending $9 at each time, do the math. Which is cheaper, okay? Because this was very difficult for us because we was very busy and we always found ourselves on the road working, getting off work. We was tired, but we actually had to implement this into our lifestyle, and we seen the money saved because we actually found ourselves spending almost, I would say, nine hundred to a thousand dollars a month on eating out. Just my family. It adds up. I only have a family of three, you know. So if you're eating out and you're at, you know, any place in town. I mean, you're averaging eight to ten dollars a plate. You know, yes, you can get the kids a meal. You know, for four or five dollars, but it still adds up. Fifteen dollars one time, twenty dollars one time. And if you do that, say you implement that uh, three times out of the week, out of a, out of a seven day week period, uh, and you're spending between fifteen to twenty dollars. Twenty times three is what? Do the math. Sixty. Take that times four weeks in a month. What is that? Sixty times four is what? 200. So 200 and then take that 200 times 12. Woo! So that you, you can see easily where you can spend almost $3,000 a year just on eating out. Just, why? Because you was tired. Why? Because you, you, this was uh, convenient for you at the time. But those $3,000 should be sitting in your savings account. Should be. So actually some people could finance their own savings account just by quit eating out. Because we, as we talked about, we're going to talk about in the savings, how you should have an emergency fund. You should have a general savings account, and you should have a retirement savings account. So what if you was actually able to put up $2,400 a year into your retirement? $2,400 a year into your retirement. Some people in retirement may not have no money in there right now. But if you were just to give up eating out three or one to two times a week, you might have 1000 to 2000 a year in your savings. And if you've been working for 10 years... So you've been establishing, you've been implementing this lifestyle for 10 years. You should have $10,000 in your 401k or retirement. That's just by giving up the hamburger and french fry and the large soda. Well, now, you know, large, medium, small, they're all a dollar. Okay. So uh, now we're going to look at the second one, which is the brown bag lunch. Okay. Uh, take your lunch with you two to four times a week. And reward yourself by eating out only on Fridays for doing so good all week long. Okay? Cause so w w whenever we're talking about disciplining ourselves, we always need to make sure that we have a reward for our good behavior. It's just like your children. They bring you home an A-plus report card. We don't say, oh, that was a good job, and send them on their way. Is that any encouragement for them to do all A's next week? We want to reward ourselves. So whenever we are disciplining ourselves and we're basically making good stewards, good choices, good decisions. So if you go all week long, say individuals used to eat out once a week or twice a week uh, during the week while he was at work, okay? Or you may eat out every week. I don't know what you do. But um, say... Two to four times you're going to bring your own lunch. So say, and, you, and your reward is going to be, instead of me eating out two times out of the work week, I'm only going to eat out once, okay? So that one time that you ate out, you're saving money, okay? So if we can implement this, because, see, now this, this goes hand in hand because, see, what happens sometimes is we eat out at work, and then we get home, and we eat out again to, to, for, as a family, so now if a husband and wife is doing this and you do it as a family, you find yourself spending even more money on food. So what you find yourself doing here is if you can bring a brown bag, 
lunch. You know, and that, and that brown bag consists of a lot of things. I mean, you can have a ham and cheese sandwich. You can have a turkey and cheese. You can have roast beef and cheese. You can have peanut butter and jelly. You can have a salad. You can have a tuna salad. You can have crackers and cheese. Go look at different Lunchables that they have out there. You can physically make a nice, healthy lunch for around 2 to $3, and it'd be okay, okay? And uh, what this is going to call for you to do now, this is replacing, and it's going back to, again with healthy stewardship, this is going to be replacing that fatty junk food that we eat uh, uh, on the fly, on the flip, because, you know, we're on work, we've been we're busy, we didn't really have time to prepare a lunch. It's really going to take discipline because you're going to have to get home, and you're, that's the first thing you're going to have to do. It's not waking up in the morning preparing your lunch. I like to prepare it the night before, for, before I'm even going to work. That way when I get up in the morning, it's not even stressful. I just grab it and go. But you need to be be thinking about what can I put into a lunch so I can take it to work and eat it and it be fooling, be nutritious to me, and also allow for me to save some money. Okay, so now we're replacing this $5 of eating out. We're replacing it with maybe a $3 brown bag that we may be able to get more than one because you can buy like a whole pack of lunch meat for like 3 or $4. You can get a loaf of bread as we talked earlier. You can put some Miracle Whip. You can get some bags of chips for like 2 or $3. You can throw in some fruit, some grapes, some tomatoes. You can make it a healthy, get you a yogurt. You can do things that are filling while you're at work. And it would be way cheaper than eating out every day. So if you can implement this, and then, like I said, if you, was, if you had a problem with this, reward yourself on Friday. On Friday, go out to eat. Now, don't splurge. You ain't got to get a $10 deal to make up for, for not eating out all week. But what you can do is you can, um, you know, go and try to find you a good deal. Get you a coupon. They put them in your mailbox or they down. You can get a coupon. Get you a coupon. You may be able to buy, buy one burger, get one free. Buy, um, buy a fry and get something free. Get you a coupon and still save money. Okay, but you're rewarding yourself because you've been good all week long. You you disciplined yourself. You had good behavior all week long. You didn't eat out not one time. You used to eat out three times a week. Now you only eat now one time a week. And I guarantee you, when you get paid on Friday, you're going to find yourself with a little bit of money left over because before you would have been spending this money on food. So now now you save money at home, okay, because you're cooking at home. And now you're saving again because you're not eating out all week long on your job. You're only eating out maybe once. And then that may empty out and you turn around and say, well, you know, I'm just going to bring my lunch on Fridays too. Maybe I only eat out on work maybe once a month because you start seeing how much money you can save. Because I'm telling you, 5 to $10 a week over a long period of time adds up. But even at the end of the month, if you find yourself, seem like you seem like you're getting your paycheck and seem like you don't have as much left over, you know, you seem like, man, I should, why don't, you only got $5 left over, only got $15 left over. Well, look back over your work week. How much did you spend on food? It could have, there could be your extra 15 or $20 that you should have in your pocket, but it's gone because you spent it on food. Okay, so it's a very important that we look at, at every little thing. And that's why I told you guys earlier and when we was talking about budgeting that you have to jot down everything, everything. Those candy bars that's in the dollar machine for a dollar, that soda that's $1.35, that um, bag of chips that's uh, 85 cents to a dollar in the vending machine if you have a vending machine at work. If you're getting a pack of gum, that's 50 cents in the vending machine. I don't know what you're, you're but you have to look at those little things add up throughout the day. Okay, uh, third one, make a list before going to the grocery store. Humans have a tough time resisting the temptation of purchasing extra items while shopping. Making a list will help avoid unnecessary items we do not need. Okay, so remember we, we talked about this earlier, how you know you go to the grocery store, you may have the list, but those little things that are at the register waiting to check out grab your attention. So what I always find myself doing is telling myself throughout the store it's not on the list. Mm -hmm. It's not on the list. Yes, it looks good, but it's not on the list. Maybe next time. You got to discipline. These are things that you have to personally do to discipline yourself. So when you get into the grocery, because a list is not beneficial if you add to it momentarily while you're there or you make changes. You know, oh, I know they ain't on the list, but I'm going to get it anyway. Okay. If you went to the store with a grocery list and now you have a budget saying, okay, you can, because I like to physically, once I make my list, I add it up. I get an estimate. I've been growing a grocery store every month, so I should know a kind of idea how much these items cost. So if I spent $200 last month in groceries, I know I should be somewhere around the 200 marker this month. Okay, if you go weekly, okay, I encourage not going every week to the grocery store, but that's how some people choose to shop. I like to go every month. Once a month, I get everything I need for my whole entire house for, that's going to last for the whole month and be done with it. 
That way I'm not going back and forth just to get in this. Just, yes, you got to go and get your eggs and your little things like that in between the week. But I try to get the majority of my stuff that lasts for the whole month. But what I'm implementing is you need to have a grocery list. Don't just go into the grocery store without a list and just say, I'm going shopping today. Mm. That's the worst thing to do. You're setting yourself up for failure. You are setting yourself up for failure. And they, another thing to say is don't go to the store hungry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> if you go to the store hungry, you know, everything looks good right now. Okay, you buying stuff that was already, that's already done. You plan to eat it before you even get out the store. Okay, so it's important to make a list. And the second thing is don't go to the store hungry. And what this making a list does, it helps you to stay within the guidelines that you have planned to spend. Okay, so if you had a budget of two to three hundred dollars, well, if you made your list and you add it up and it comes to four hundred dollars and you already know that you're not within budget. So what does that mean? It's time to start getting something off the list, checking something off. Okay, because you need to have a budget with the list. Okay, and this is going to help you to not lose your extra 10, 15, 20. Some people come out 30, 40 dollars over budget on their groceries. And it may happen to you. It may take a while. Like I said, this is not going to happen overnight. If you're not doing these things, this is not going to happen overnight. This is something that you want to slowly tradition or change your lifestyle into doing, you know, because you're like, man, he's taking away all the good stuff. I can't eat out no more. I can't, I can't, I go to the grocery store with a list. You know, I can't eat out for, for work. Well, I'm not telling you you can't do it. I'm saying this will help you to have to save some money. And talk to dumb little man. He'll tell you about it, okay? Dumb little man, he'll tell you about how to do this. Okay, now we're going to look at uh, consolidate and pay off debt as soon as possible. Okay, if you carry any debt, focus on lowering interest rates and paying off debt as soon as possible. Money paid in interest is just like throwing money away. Why spend hard earned cash making financial institutions rich? Okay, so we talked about that all last week about the debt. Okay, and do you mom, do you, anyone remember the uh, interest that was paid on the computer last week? Two hundred and ninety four dollars in interest when we was doing the math problems. OK, so could you guys use that two hundred and ninety four dollars to benefit you on something else? This was just a laptop. I could use two hundred and ninety four dollars to benefit me somewhere else. So here, this consolidate and pay off just to kind of touch. This is another way to save money, because if you if you find your extra money going on interest, going on debt, it's not going into your savings account. OK, it's not going into your emergency fund. It's taken. These things are taken away. All these things that your money is taken away from what you have planned to save. It's taken away from your retirement. It's taken away from from your emergency fund if something breaks down you got interest on this and you're paying interest on the interest that can add up and establish emergency funds if you can just cancel them get rid of them so because I, I i had gotten to kind of a um disopinionated because i was talking with a guy and i was telling him you know i don't think it's beneficial for you to have a savings account when you have debt you know and he kind of disagreed with me but i'm sitting there thinking you know how can you save if you have debt you know, don't worry. Why don't you focus on paying that debt off and then save? OK, you, 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 you kind of splitting your time, you're splitting your money. OK, you need to focus on getting your debt paid off. Why, why would you say I'm going to save ten dollars a month, but you're paying 20 out in interest? Mm. Take that 10 and get that get that debt paid off so then you can save the whole 30. OK, don't split your money with the financial institutions. So if you are in a lot of debt, you don't don't let's focus on getting that debt knocked off first, getting it paid off. And then we can start and see where how much can we save. Don't split. Don't split your money. Uh, why? And it says right here, why spend your hard earned cash making financial institutions rich? You work hard for your money. You work hard. You put in long hours. OK. And then and then here's the financial institution. They don't do nothing but got their hand out. They ain't put in no work at all. None. They just advertised for a deal and you bought it. And now you're working to pay for it. Okay. Uh, the end one on there says pay your bills on time and avoid late fees. I always pay. I always believe in this. As soon as you get your bill, pay it so you are not tempted to buy something else with your bill money. So you can avoid late fees. And by paying your bills on time, if you are late one time, they may waive the late fee for being a valuable customer. Auto pay is a good direct pay from your bank. Okay, so uh, paying your bills on time this is something I always establish and strive to teach people that, um, 
you shouldn't be late on your bills, period. You know, and sometimes we make poor decisions and we put ourselves in a situation where we have to get an extension or something, but this should be an occurrence. We need to figure out what's going on. Why am I late on my bills? Why am I not having enough to pay my bills? Because that's why they implement late fees. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you got a $60 water bill, $60 heat bill, and they you late and they charge you 10 or $15. Or if you write a check and then the bank wants to charge you because your your bank your your check didn't clear you that's wasted money okay so and it's all because you was not good financially handling your money okay so what i like to do is that's why we talked earlier in the week about the budget okay and what we find ourselves doing is we need as soon as that bill comes we need to pay it some people like to they like to pinch it or they are they get the stuff they want and then they pay you pay your bills first Hey, don't get in the habit. It's easy to get into the habit of uh, just, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it, putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. And then you find yourself, you know, with the late fees and you find yourself running late to late all the time. And that you, you, you're doing, you're making things worse for yourself. Those little, every time you're late, five, they, they, the, the world wants to tax you on everything. They want to charge you extra for everything. They're quick to put a late fee on there. They are quick to put it on there. You be one or two days late. They, well, you know, you have late fees. For what? Okay, so if you can just be a good steward, be a good management over your money, you can find yourself saving in late fees. Now, this may not address everyone in here. I may not be talking to anybody in here. This is just a visual aid on letting you know, okay, you can run into these problems. No one is exempt from becoming where they may be running late on their bills. It could be me. But the whole thing is we have to be aware that late fees occur, and that's money that we should be having going into our savings account. So we have to avoid the late fees. Okay, by paying bills on time. And I added there, if you do run into times where you have late fees, uh, if you don't do this all the time, sometimes the, if you can ask them, talk to them, they may waive them. You know, if you say, hey, you know, you've been a valid customer, this happened before, you may have forgot. Sometimes you do forget that I had this bill or you may, something may have happened, a whole bunch of stuff may happen in the week and you don't have enough to pay your bill. But as long as you've been a valid customer, and they know, well, you ain't running late every month. Then they say, okay, you know, we, we can we can extend it this time. We ain't gonna put that late fee on there. That's all because you've been a valid customer, not because you've been running late every week, every month. Okay, and then uh, I put that on there. Auto pay is a good direct pay from your bank. So some if you have problems paying your bills, sometimes uh, having them directly deposited out of your account is a good way to uh, have your bills paid. Or if you can set it up where you can pay it over the phone, you know, just call in and. Get it. Sometimes if it's easier for you to do it, it's, you find yourself doing it. If it's something, you know, back in the old times we had to um, write checks and mail the letters and do a bunch of stuff to get it there on time. So you're trying to post date, trying to beat the mail and trying to send it three to four days before they get that. But nowadays there's easier ways to pay your bills so you can be on time so you don't have to worry about your late fees. There's so many ways that you can, you can pay now. I want to talk about uh, be aware of overdraft fees. Not balancing your checkbook, right, can cause overdraft fees. It may cost you 40 or $50 depending on your bank. Some banks offer overdraft protection. So those, this is for those that write checks and they're not aware of this overdraft fee that occurs. Debit card, you swiping money in your debit card and the money's not in your account. The fees are ridiculous. And uh, Bank of America is one of the worst ones. They will charge you per day. Once the, the fees are not in the account, and then a lot of times you got to watch the banks. The banks will allow for smaller deposits, smaller credits to go through first. And then your bigger ones that you're thinking that you had money in there for, they let all these little bitty ones go through. Then they take that real big one at one time, and now you're like, man, what happened? You know, I, the, the, I spent, I, did, I had the big one in there. You know, it may have been a majority of the money. I had that one. I, I paid that a long time ago. Why hasn't that went through yet? But all these little ones went through. Why? Because they're trying to get that extra 40 to $50 out of you. They ain't going to give it back. They're not going to give it back. So you have to really be aware of uh, balancing your checkbook. And sometimes you may have stuff that goes through and you don't even know about it. And then a week or two done went by and they don't, you got your accounts overdrawn by $85, $90. You're like, what's happened? Well, the bank has been charging you. It may be a dollar that you overdrawn, but the bank is charging you maybe $30, $40 a day. Every day is going up and you don't even know about it. And you can call and talk to them and sometimes you can get them, you know, to 
to wipe it out, wave it. But a lot of times they're not willing to work with you. The money wasn't in the account. They're not willing to work with you. And that's why, because they're trying to get rich too. Off of those that don't handle, handle and manage their money correctly, they're trying to get rich too. That's a lot of money to an individual. If you wrote a check for like 6 or $7 to get something to eat, okay, and you, you was like, well, I didn't have the money in the account at the time to cover that $6. For them to charge you $40 or $30 on a $6, $6 purchase, really? That's ridiculous. But they'll do it. They do it. So uh, it's very important. Uh, they have overdraft protection offered to some people. So sometimes when the money's not in there, uh, they'll go ahead and pay it for you. And then you have to put the money back. Sometimes they can, you can offer that. That can be offered to you at your bank. So I encourage some people, you might get that. If you're bad at balancing checks, if you're bad at your money management, you might get that. Y'all hear that? They charge you ten dollars. So they so uh, at Bank of America you can get uh, overdraft protection, but they only charge you ten dollars now. Ain't that nice? <laughs> it's only ten dollars for your six dollar purchase, not fifty and sixty. Thank you for being so nice. I still would rather have my ten dollars. Okay, because well, look at it now. Okay, say you go and get a meal for six dollars. They charge you ten dollars because you didn't have it in there. Now that meal costs you sixteen dollars. You wouldn't have paid sixteen dollars for that meal if that's what, if you knew that's what it was gonna cost at the beginning. I guarantee you, I wouldn't. Like you got me messed up paying sixteen dollars for a burger and a fry and a drink. What kind of burger is that? What I do with overdraft, I have my bank. I set a certain limit, so I get text messages if my, if my account is at a certain balance, then I'll know how much is in there and I'll know not to spend it. Mm -hmm. And also, if you overdraft, it'll text you overdraft and you have until 8 o'clock to put the money in before you get an overdraft fee. 8 p.m. This is Bank of America. Mm -hmm. They have great Chase. services. Mm -hmm. Chase. Some banks are not as fortunate. They don't care. As soon as it goes overdrawn, I don't care if it's 8 o'clock, if it's 6 o'clock, we taxing you. We want our money. That's just how it is. So. And um, like I said, you may find yourself, this, like I said, we're not, may not be speaking to everyone here, but if this is you, be aware of overdraft fees, sometimes being 40 to $50, sometimes $10, and they increase daily that you don't know that these fees are being uh, excessively overdue from day to day. Uh, point 10 there, keep your car as long as possible. See the difference between money spent on a new car, monthly payments ranging from two to eight hundred dollars. That eight hundred dollars would be a very nice vehicle. Uh, month not counting insurance. So, because anyone knows, anytime you have a full uh, coverage on a car you, uh, and you're not on it, the insurance makes you have full coverage insurance on there. So, you got to include your car payment, and you want to include how much it's going to cost for full coverage insurance on that vehicle. That all needs to be taken into consideration before you purchase a new vehicle, okay? Um, and you want to compare that to what it's going to cost for you to keep the old one running, okay? I know some people may be in the market where they need to travel and they need a very dependable, reliable car and they need something that's not going to break down. If that's your job, then that, that may be different for you because now this is actually part of in, uh, uh, employment for you, so you need a nice, dependable car. But if you're just going to work and back, and home and you go in the grocery store, you go out of town a little bit, is it more beneficial for you to just put a little extra money to this car to keep it running or is it more beneficial for you to get a new car? Think about that. A uh, car note could be 200 to $800 a month and then if you gotta put full coverage insurance on that, maybe be $100 a month. So you're looking at maybe three to $400 on average for a car, a new car, and then you turn around, could that money be going to your savings? because we're talking about ways to save money. So let's think about what different things that we have that is going on uh, debt or going on things that we don't need that we maybe could replace them and still get the same benefit because we were talking about that earlier, economic stewardship, environmental stewardship, healthy stewardship. So there's, can you do something minimum and still get the same effect? That's what we're talking about. Okay, is there things that we can already replace? We take our money and we're putting them on this, but what if I just put two, three hundred dollars into this car and it allows it to run better and I'm still 
getting the same effect as I would be if I was in a brand new car. Okay? So um, on ways to save money, there wasn't all 30 of them, but I hope you guys can visit dumblittleman.com to see on ways to save money. Okay? And once we do this, uh, we should have this general savings with our bank or at home. Okay? Question and there here says, many people have never been taught to save, so we are like children when it comes to money. We immediately want to spend it without any forethought of saving. You all often hear people say, life is short. If you want something, buy it now. We need to save as much as possible so when a rainy day comes, we are not in the rain without a raincoat or umbrella. Okay, so this is the first thing that I want to talk about was establishing a general savers account. So we're going to take all these things I just talked about, and if you go home and do your research and look at the, all the 30 ways, we want to take this and we want to start and establish a general savers account. You may start this at your home. You may start this with the bank. But this is just a general savers account, something that you may not have right now. You may just have a checkings account. Or you may have a checkings and savings account, but you may not have no savings in your savings account. So once we look at all this Right here, the 30 ways of saving, and you may come up with other ways that you may think you can save. We want to start taking this money and putting it into that general savings account, okay? Even if you find you do all this and you may only find that you, you're going to save additional 5 to $10 by doing this, okay? That's 5 or $10 you didn't have before, and you got to start somewhere, and you want to put this into your general savings account. We also talked about the change the change, um, I didn't talk about it, but I should have talked about it. Your change could add up. You can have a change program with your, with your bank, and what they will do is they will round up your money that you spend. So say you go to the gas station, you get something for $1.50. They will round that purchase up to $2. They put the 50 cents in your savings account, and $1.50 goes towards the purchase. So that's maybe every time you purchase in some money, you are now saving. Okay? It's called a change, uh, change adds up or change rewards program. Keep the change program. Okay, so that's another thing that you may be able to take advantage of, and you're saving, and, and just by spending money, you ain't even changing your habits. It's just because you, you get the total purchase, and the difference goes into your savings account. That's saving easy. That's saving easy. I'm the old, old way, and I'd like to get a bucket, and I, I, I don't pay exact change for nothing. If it comes to $1.35, I, don't, I pay with $2, and I get the change, and I just put it in my ashtray. I get home, I put it in my bucket, I put it in my little jar, and I cash it in after three or four or five months. It might be an extra 50 or $60, but either way it goes, I'm saving money, okay? So the, the, what, we, what we do is we need to find and think of the best ways that we ourselves can save money. You may not have change. I don't know what works for you, but this is just to encourage you and to help you to look at what ways can you save money and put that money in your savings account. Put it in there. And hopefully when you see it to start to grow, it should encourage you and give you the, the stamina that you need to continue saving. Okay? So general savings account. Everyone should try to go get one as soon as this session is out. <laughs> so it means not today, but Monday, go get you a savings account. Sometimes they will give you rewards for opening up a savings account. You may have to have a minimum payment in there, but they may, they may give you a card for opening up one. But the whole key is to save. Don't just have it open and get the $50 gift card and that's it. Okay, then we're going to go here, uh, <coughs> budget, 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 and here's how. Okay, and we talked about the listing of all available income, list all monthly income. Uh, I want to talk there, uh, emergency savings account, at the very bottom. That's $1,000, okay, at least, $1,000 at least. And then we have the retirement savings account. We're gonna, we won't be able to share all that in this session, but that's what we're going to be dealing with. Uh, but those are the three that I want everyone to have established or working on establishing when all of these sessions are over. I want everyone to have a general savings account. I want them to have an emergency savings account of at least $1,000 or more. And then the third one is our 401k, our retirement savings plan. Okay, and when we get out of debt, and when we budget, and whenever we be good stewards over what the Lord has blessed us with, we can establish these three things, and we can grow these three things. Because your savings account doesn't have to have a certain limit on it. See, there's no number there on your general savings with your bank. So you can save ten thousand dollars. That's good. You can save twenty thousand dollars. That's good. Your emergency savings it says a thousand dollars at least. 
meaning that it don't have to stop at $1,000. You can have a $12,000 emergency savings account. That's good. With a $10,000 general savings account, that's good. With a $30,000 401k or retirement account, that's good. This is something that you grow. As we talked earlier in the sessions, you worked 30, 40 years, you may have made a million dollars. You may have made $2 million, but how much have you saved today? First Lady gave the perfect illustration. I want you to think about how much money you have made since you started working. You may start when you're 16, you may start when you're 17, you may start when you're 18, you may not work at all, I don't know. But think about how much money have you made over the time that you have been working and then let's look at this general savings, emergency savings, and 401k. How much is in there? You do the math. You answer, you answer the question. So if individuals made 400000 500000 in the last five years, 10 years, and you have no money in your savings, you have no emergency fund, and you have no retirement, where did that four hundred? where did that $500,000 go? Huh? Makes you think. Huh? Where'd it go? Could it went out on food? Could it went out on clothes? Nothing, material, nothing but materialistic things. So if we don't establish a general savings, an emergency savings, and some type of retirement savings, game, we don't have some type of budget, we don't have some type of goal, we find ourselves doing work for 30, 40 years and ain't got nothing. Nothing. And God does not want this. God wants us to be good stewards over what he's blessed us with and to be able to lend and not have to borrow. To lend and not have to borrow. It says that a borrower is a slave to the lender. We find ourselves borrowing money all the time. We are now a slave to the lender. We're a slave to the banks. We're a slave to the financial institutions. We're a slave to our jobs. Because we have to stay on there to pay off all the debt that we've done encountered over the 10 or 20, 30 years. So what we have to do is we have to take authority over our finances now and we have to see what it is that's hindering me from establishing a savings account, what's hindering me from getting that $1,000 emergency fund, what's hindering me from establishing a retirement plan, and we have to put it into action. The Bible talks about how my people are destroyed from a lack of knowledge. We are getting knowledge today. We're getting understanding today, and we're going to do better. And I believe that we can be debt-free by the end of the year. I have some debts paid off. I wish one sister, I was going to have her testify today, she just paid off her car. Mm -hmm. She told me last week she paid her car off. She ain't buying another one. She, buying another one. <laughs> she said she's going to save about, I think she said maybe three to $400 every month she's going to save. That's a blessing. This is three or $400 of her hard-earned money that she's going to be able to put into one of these accounts, whether it's a general savings, whether it's an emergency fund. If she got a $1,000 emergency fund and she's saving three to $400, a month, it ain't going to take her long to reach that $1,000. It's not going to take long at all. So this is just something to put on your minds next week. It looks like we're going to be talking about budgeting, financial goals, and five-year planning. And I'm going to go in more detail about the mercy savings and 401K on ways to save. Thank everyone for coming out third week. Now, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can see me after class, and I will try to address them next week. God bless you, and we thank everyone for coming to Step of Faith's fourth, third week of financial stewardship.